Happy Vlogmas. Today is December 5th. It is currently 5.45 a.m. and I'm setting up to do my advent spin before I go to work today. Um, I naturally wake up, again, I don't even know if waking up is a good point because I don't, sleep isn't regular for me, but I naturally wake up super early and so the hour to an hour and a half I'm up before work is like my me time. And so I figured this would be the perfect, wow. I figured this would be the perfect time to like sit and spin and hang out with you guys. So we are going to, this is actually my first day doing this before work. So we'll see what kind of shape I'm in and if I'm any more incoherent than I normally am because normally I get up before work, I put on a podcast and I like do stuff, but now I'm like actually trying to get up and like be a person and socialize. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to grab today's bundle. So, so far we've spun pineapple, Polworth, and silk and we've spun BFL. Oh, I should show you what the BFL looked like. Okay. So hold on. I'm going to show you what the BFL looked like because I did finish the spin so we could move on. So if this is your first time joining me for Vlogmas, I'll put a playlist up here. So if you want to keep up on like the spins that we've done so far, I'll put a playlist up there if that makes it easier. Um, but here's what the BFL looked like. So they're super bright colors, um, which I kind of enjoy. I think it's going to be nice uh, since the days are getting darker and shorter to have fun, bright colors to spin every morning. Well, every other morning. I'm spinning mine every other day because I have a 12 day advent and that way I stretch it out for the whole month. Um, and then if I spin it like every other day, if I don't finish the ounce, then I have a little bit to spin the next day. But I've been finishing the ounce every day and then doing miscellaneous things on off days. So day 15, which is day three. Let's see what Jen has cooked up for us. We do the opening dance. Also, I am indeed wearing a KK Slider hoodie. I love Animal Crossing, um, and I have a bunch of Animal Crossing hoodies. KK Slider is the goat. Ooh, ooh, okay. Okay, we have some more muted colors today. Let's find the tag that tells us what this is. Ooh, Targi! Okay, I actually enjoy spinning Targi. Um, I'm not one for Rambouillet, which, hot take, I know. Um, but I actually enjoy spinning Targi. And this is like a really muted rainbow. Oh, I love the purple in it. Here we go. Here's what it looks like. I love the little pop of purple in it too. Um, so like my favorite colorways to spin are the colorways where there's like something darker in it to ground it. So it could be like fun, bright colors. But if it has like a dark blue or a dark purple or even like a brown, those tend to be my favorite colorways to spin. Now, I cannot spin Targi. I can't spin Targi without pre-drafting. Um, if you know anything about Targi, it has huge squish factor. Targi is like a high crimp, dense uh, fleece. And I will not be able to draft this unless I give it... It also has a really short staple. So like if you, you can't pre-draft too much because then you'll pull the braid apart. So I'm literally just tugging it the slightest bit. I'm barely trying to open the fiber up. I might actually just go widthwise on this and not lengthwise. That might be enough. But yeah, if, if personally, if I don't like split Targi up, I'm not spinning it. Um, normally when I spin Targi, well, most of my like dyed top spins, I do a fractal and I do like one four fractals and I actually really prefer spinning Targi in like smaller sections so we'll see how this goes with this big half a braid in my hand because this is not normally how I spin Targi so we'll see look at that bounce that that's bananas okay and then our topic today what are we chit-chatting we're chit-chatting about buying raw fleece online because a bunch of my friends have asked me how I do it what I know to look for what do I ask? Um, and so I just thought I would sit here and give you a few tips for how I do it while I spin this gorgeous Targi top and then we'll call Vlogmas Day 3 done. So I'm going to switch my camera around. Every day I do this, I have to figure out a new camera angle because I'm constantly moving things. So I'm going to switch my camera around. We're going to see um, how this goes and we'll chit chat about buying raw fleece even though I'm not doing it for a year and that makes me sad. But I can tell you how to do it. I can give you my sources even though I'm not doing it and it makes me sad. BRB. 
All right, so number one tip for buying raw wool online, for buying fleeces, not even for buying fleeces online, is understand what you're getting yourself into. There is a huge element of risk involved when you buy a fleece online because you're buying it relying on the person on the other end being honest with you about what they're selling to you. Um, and so that is a huge risk. And because it's a huge risk, I don't, so I have a threshold. All right. So I have a threshold about what I will spend for fleece online. If it is not a well-known, you know, a well-known, uh, gr grower or shepherd, I'm not sure shepherd breeder. We'll use shepherd today. Cause I'm not sure what the correct term is. Um, if it's not a well-known shepherd or breeder, I have a threshold for what I will pay for a raw fleece. Now, sometimes people sell fleeces per pound. Um, sometimes people sell fleeces by the fleece. And if you get like a half fleece, so in my experience, I've seen a lot of people sell a fleece like at a cost. And then if you ask them if they split it, they'll sell it per pound. Um, that's just my experience. And sometimes people just list fleeces per pound straight out the gate. So if you're buying the whole fleece, you're buying it at, you know, XYZ a pound. Um, and if you're buying half, you're buying it at same XYZ per pound. What you're willing to pay is a personal journey you have to go on. But I have a threshold for what I will pay for someone who A, I have not worked with and B, is not like a well-known like okay so like if if you know if i get offered a ruppert's Corydale by uh, jeff ruppert i will pay whatever his asking price is because jeff has a long standing history in the fiber community a bunch of my friends have bought fleeces from him before he's shown fleeces at shows and his fleeces have won so i know that if i buy a fleece from him he is going to sell me something amazing because his name is on the line right no one wants to be the person who gets like a bad Ruppert's fleece who goes online and goes, I paid X, Y, Z for this. And it is not what you would expect from a Ruppert's fleece, right? You're not, that's not going to happen. I would get a fleece from Apple Creek's Marinos or a Steighoff, like any of the bigger people that you follow on Instagram that you see go to shows and you have to like wait two, three years to get a fleece from them. Those are the people that I'll pay like, you know, an exorbitant amount of money because that those fleeces are luxury items. Like they're hard to get. They're probably going to be super delicious to process because it's people who have had years and years of selective breeding to get an amazing flock. So, you know, those are luxury items. It's not something you do every day, but I wouldn't balk so much at the cost of that. If I'm talking to a person who I've never bought a fleece from before and they tell me that like their fleece is like $30 a pound, I'm walking. Personally, I'm walking because that is a high risk and maybe moderate reward situation that I'm not trying to get myself into with a shepherd that I don't know and that I don't know their reputation. So you gotta decide what you're willing to pay because it's, it's a risk. So you're, you, it's risk versus reward. What are you willing to risk? If it is a five pound fleece and it's $30 a pound, that's $150 that you're putting out there and you have no idea what you're gonna get in the mail when it comes in the mail. So you got to first decide what your threshold is and everyone's threshold is personal. I mean, I guess I'll share mine with you. So if I'm buying, I bought Shetland for $20 a pound. I don't think $20 a pound for Shetland is unreasonable, especially since Shetland fleeces tend to be on the smaller side. So both of my lamb fleeces that I showed you guys, if you watch episode two of the podcast, both of those lamb fleeces were $20 a pound but they were each a pound and a half, and so the fleeces were $30. So I could look at it as $20 a pound fleeces, but they were also only a pound and a half, and so I paid $30 for the fleece, um, which does not seem, like that seems low risk for me. So I, if I got it and it wasn't great, I could have probably blended it in with something else because it was only a pound. It was not a big commitment fleece. Um, and so I didn't feel that like, it wasn't that big of a deal to me. I know that if I find like a Cormo fleece, like fine wool fleeces are probably gonna go for more than like the more medium and the long wool fleeces because they're sought after. I like, personally, my sweet spot is 12 to eight. If I'm paying per pound, my sweet spot is 12 to 18. 
that's where I've gotten some really good fleeces at 15 to 18 dollars a pound uh, really really good fleeces at 15 to 18 dollars a pound and I like to buy it on the raw wool for sale Facebook group that's where I get all my stuff because it's the shepherds posting it directly for consumers um, and then you can talk to talk to the shepherds so 15 to 18 dollars is my wheelhouse 20 dollars is like a luxury item the most I paid per pound for a fleece on the Raw Wolf for Sale Facebook group was $22 for a pound, and I only got three pounds of it. Because even that, like, super precious five-pound merino from the show flock that I got, that was $20 a pound. And so, like, I first of all, I thought it was going to be a lot more when I reached out to her and asked her how much it was. I was expecting it to be a lot more. Um, but it was $20 a pound. So, like, the most I paid for a fleece was $22 a pound I've gotten large fleeces like a set I got a seven pound fleece um, and that one I paid like a set price for so that's the other thing is if you're paying per pound and then these are large fleeces it is going to add up so you have to decide if you want to pay per pound or pay per fleece because different shepherds will have different um, modes of how they price their fleeces and this is when you just have to start talking to people so first decide what you're willing to invest in a fleece and in a project um, Icelandic's tend to be on the smaller side Shetlands tend to be on a smaller side but if you're gonna get like a Corydale those can be huge like those can be like a half Corydale could be like five pounds like those are gonna be huge investment projects so decide first what you're willing to spend before you start looking for a fleece because if you don't have a budget and you start looking for fleeces and you find this amazing thing and you don't have a budget you might start making questionable choices so I would pers like if you're if you can use Facebook browse through the raw wool for sale Facebook group see what things are going for and then decide I would say especially if this is your first fleece a beware of cheap fleeces like super cheap fleeces and definitely beware of, fl of the free fleece because the free fleece sometimes has a lot of work involved um, and I don't know if you want to do that, especially for your first fleece. The free fleece might not be skirted. The free fleece might have a ton of VM, might have a ton of second cuts. There might be a reason why it's free. It might not be from a sheep that was raised for fiber. And that doesn't mean that it won't have good wool. It means that you should manage your expectations and know what you're getting yourself into. So once you've decided how much you want to spend on a fleece, and you found the shepherd you want to get your fleece from you got to talk to the shepherd and so there's a few things that i like to ask before i buy you know this targi is spinning up beautifully i don't know i have not had any issues with drafting it it's just it's just going so i forgot how nice targi is to spin i'm also spinning it across the top i have not really had to do i'm jinxing myself because as soon as i say this i'm gonna have to do it but i have not had to do any like stop and joins when i spin across the top i just go from left to right and then back to the left side and that way I'm not spinning down the side I'm spinning across the top this is spinning a little bit thicker than I remember the BFL spinning yesterday but I kind of don't I'm not worried about that because I feel like all those inconsistencies will balance out in the wash because this is gonna be a three-ply yarn and it's gonna be a three-ply yarn with like ten different fibers in it so the odds of me getting a perfectly consistent three-ply are very low um, I do think this is spinning a little bit thicker and I could go get my spinners control card but I won't because we live that chaotic life and I'm not that invested in getting a perfectly even uh, project so what was I saying so you have to talk to your shepherd so normally you know if you're buying a fleece online there's gonna be pictures of the fleece and you should hopefully see the cut side which is the side that was against the animal and the tip side which is the side that faced you know the weather or the coat the cut side should be the color of what you expect your fleece to be and the tip side might have some sun bleaching that is normal do not be alarmed if you're getting a black fleece and it has like blonde tips sun bleaching happens from the sun you remember these are animals that are out and about living their best life sun bleaching is not like an uncommon occurrence so you look at it you look at the price of it you look at the weight of it the first thing I look for in a fleece is whether it's skirted or not. Because there are some people who do sell fleeces unskirted. I am not buying an unskirted fleece. I do not have the space to skirt a fleece in my apartment. You have to do that uh, outside. I cannot like lay out a fleece in my apartment and start pulling out poop and all that other stuff. 
So I'm for, for the record, skirting is when they open up a fleece and they remove all the bad stuff. So they remove the belly wool, they remove the leg wool, they remove manure, like all that stuff should come off during the skirting process. So if you get a skirted fleece, there should not be any poop or any of that like gross stuff. So the first thing I look for when I look at a fleece is if it was skirted. If it's not skirted, it's not for me. You might be willing to skirt a fleece, but just understand that if you get an unskirted fleece, then you're gonna have to deal with all that junk and please make sure you wear gloves. So after I look for whether the fleece is skirted and if I'm still interested in the color, then I message the, the shepherd of the flock. And one of the first things I ask the shepherd, after I find out if the fleece is still available, I ask, have they sold to hand spinners? Because selling to hand spinners and selling to a mill is very different. I, like a mill can handle, you know, second cuts and all those other things, but if I'm gonna pay per pound, I don't wanna pay per pound for unusable fiber. So I always ask if they've sold to hand spinners before, and if they have, what do the people they've sold to before say about their fleeces? Sometimes people go back and like they leave comments on like the shepherd's post in the Raw Wool for Sale Facebook group if they've gotten a fleece from them, which I do all the time. If I've seen someone post a fleece and I got a fleece from them the first time, I will comment and I was like, oh my God, I got a fleece from the shepherd, love that. Because I think that kind of like review helps people like understand, because you know, you're taking a chance, right? These are risks. So I think that kind of review helps give the shepherd, you know, a little bit of, not necessarily an advantage, but like a, hey, this person has sold to hand spinners before and the spinner likes their fleece. So I, you know, I'll look out for that. Um, but I always ask them if they've sold to hand spinners before because it helps me understand if they know what they're doing. So some of the people on the Raw Wolf for Sale Facebook group are hobby farmers. Um, but, and there's nothing wrong with a hobby farm, but it means they're not like breeding for genetics or they're, my, they're maybe not coding their sheep or what have you. So you're gonna get a different fleece from someone like Jeff Ruppert or a hobby farmer. It's just gonna be a different fleece. You might find a gem. I have found some amazing things, but it's going to be different. So I first asked if they sold to hand spinners and then I asked if they coat their sheep. I will buy an uncoated fleece but I will not pay as much for an uncoated fleece as I will for a coated fleece. That's just, that's a no brainer. So when a shepherd coats their fleet, their sheep, they change their coats multiple times a year and it's to protect the fleece from having VM in it. So VM is like, hey, remember sheep are outside. They're not living in a vacuum. They're animals, they're running around, they're living their best life. So it protects the sheep, from, it, protect, it protects the fleece from hay, from like burrs, from grass seeds, from all the stuff that's out and about. Um, and so coating, because the farmer has to pay for the coat and also change the coat multiple times uh, as the fleece grows, because if you don't change the coat, the tips on the fleece will like felt under the coat and it'll ruin the fleece. So they have to change the coat multiple times. So I asked if the fleece was coated or not. If it was coated, then it should, it might be more expensive than a fleece that was uncoated. And if it was uncoated, I asked the farmer how much VM is in the fleece. Because if the sheep was uncoated, the odds of you getting a fleece with zero VM are very low. Like some of it's gonna get in it. They eat hay, they are outside, they're by trees, they're doing stuff. So some, of v some VM's gonna get into it. So I always ask, for how much VM is in it. And if I could see pictures of what the VM quantity looks like, I will buy a low, even maybe not medium. I'll buy a low VM fleece because for the most part that stuff comes out in the carding. And if it doesn't come out in the carding, you could like pick it out. But I'm not gonna buy a fleece that has like huge thorns and hay and everything else sticking out. That's just more work than I'm willing to do. And again, these are all personal choices. You might be willing to like, I saw my friend Michelle, she's at my name is Inigo on Instagram. She has this fleece that she's calling Operation Hayseed and it has so much VM in it. And the yarn she's making out of it is absolutely gorgeous, but she's having to do a lot of work to process that fleece. And that's not something that, like, that's not the journey that I'm on. That's not something I'm really interested in. So I will ask to see what the VM situation is in that fleece before I commit. If the VM situation is something that I am okay with, like, you know, low to moderate VM, I will then I'll ask 
have they tested the fleece for soundness? So you wanna make sure, if it's a ewe and the ewe is bred, um, I like to, shepherds do shear most sheep before, before lambing, because breeding stress will cause, uh, can cause a break in the fleece. And so a, fle a break in the fleece is when you get a break right along the length of the staple. And when you get a break along the length of the staple, it's fragile. So it breaks during combing, it breaks during carding, it causes all these little second cuts, which then will work its way out of your yarn and will cause your yarn to pill. So you don't really want second cuts in your fiber because it's gonna cause your yarn to pill long term. So I'll ask if, the, if it was a ewe, if she was bred, and if it was shorn before breeding, and again, most farmers will just do this naturally because also it's just easier for the for lambing if the sheep doesn't have like a full year's worth of wool on them. But these are just the things I like to make sure of before I spend money because we're spending money on this stuff. Um, and then I asked if there were any breaks or flaws in the fleece. So are there any breaks? Um, is there damage? What have you? And has the fleece been tested for soundness? So there is a ping test, and if you have a lock of something at home, you could do this. You just wanna snap the, the lock a couple times by your ear, and if you snap the lock a couple times by your ear and it's a clear ping sound, the fleece is sound. If you hear any sort of like snap crackling or popping, then your fleece might not be sound. And it could be like sound in one area, not sound in the other. So when I open up a fleece, I like to open it up in the shape of the animal and then I test it for soundness in multiple locations. So I'll grab something like by the bridge, grab something by the back, grab something by like the shoulder and I'll test it for soundness in multiple locations. So I always ask, has it been tested for soundness and is the fleece sound? Cause just cause it doesn't have a visible break does not mean that it's sound. And if it's not sound and you put it through your cards or your, if you put it through like your drum card or, or your comb, you're going to tear it up and you're gonna end up with a neppy noily mess, which is not what you want to spend your money on. So if the fleece is sound and it has, you know, decent VM and it's a price that I'm willing to invest in, then I just go for it. I have been very lucky um, in that I've only gotten three, I've gotten three bad fleeces. Three bad fleeces in the maybe 30 or so that I've acquired. Three of them have been bad. One person, and, and if you get a bad fleece, don't be like ashamed to reach out to the shepherd and just be like, hey, this is not what is in line with what I paid for. And then like talk to them. It might be that they just didn't know. Uh, because again, sometimes people are new to selling to hand spinners and that's a risk you take. And it might be that something was misrepresented. I did get a fleece that was grossly misrepresented. And as soon as I opened it, I took pictures and I sent it to the shepherd. And I was like, this is not what we discussed. This is not what we agreed upon. And she agreed with me and gave me my money back. So don't be ashamed to reach out. If you buy a fleece and it's not what you thought you were getting, do not be ashamed to reach out to the shepherd and just be like, hey, this isn't in line with what we discussed. And can we like solve this? Because... You want your money to go, you know, a pretty long way. And it's really disappointing when you wait for a fleece to come in the mail and it finally comes in the mail and then it's just not great. So, so those are my tips for buying a raw fleece online. And you just, you're going to get more comfortable doing it the more you do it. But there's just a few really important questions you have to ask. And I think if you ask these questions, it kind of makes people like take you a little bit more seriously. It's like, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. Oh, also find out about the staple length. If it's not listed in the Facebook post, if you're getting a, face, a fleece on the Raw Wool for Sale Facebook group and it's not listed on the Facebook post, ask what the staple length is. And then, if you're really interested, you can ask if they've, post, if they've sold to hand spinners before or if they are a hand spinner themselves, ask if they would comb or card the fleece. I ask this question all the time. Like, how would you prepare this? If you're a spinner, how would you prepare this? Because it gives you a little bit of insight into what you might be getting. Are you getting something with like a, a long staple that would be good for combing and for lace? Are you getting something that's super short that like combing is not ideal for but would card up beautifully? So ask about your staple length just so you know what you're getting yourself into. If it's not listed in the post, a lot of people will list it in the post directly though. So there is that. So if you're not getting the fleece and the raw wool for sale Facebook group, I'm gonna share some of my favorite sources with you because I'm not getting a fleece next year. So you can have mine. 
So my, one of my favorite farms to get a fleece from, and I've, I have three fleeces from Robin, and it makes me really sad. I mean, I might have to add an exception for Robin next year to my, if I start adding exceptions to the no buy before the no buy has even started, I'm not gonna get very far. Um, but one of my favorite, favorite, favorite fiber farms is Robin at Nystock. Robin raises uh, purebred Cotswold fleeces, but she also raises a lot of interesting crosses. Um, so Large Marge was a, uh, is a cross from Nystock. I just scoured a fleece from a lovely you named Ginger. Uh, I, I just I love Robin's fleeces and her fleeces are always coated um, no she's a few that are uncoated but everything's listed on her website she sends you so many pictures and she's so you know she's very knowledgeable and very easy to deal with and Robin has a great reputation if you just search like nice stock on Instagram you'll see a bunch of people who have gotten fleeces from Robin and have worked with them she is super knowledgeable about her sheep and about hand spinning in general so she's a great resource um, the other farm that I have purchased multiple fleeces from that I will continue to purchase fleeces from is Strawberry Ridge. She's out in the Midwest and she raises Corydales. And I'll put I'll put the names of everything that I'm everybody that I'm mentioning in the description box. So this is if you want to like if you want a reputable person that I've bought from that has a presence outside of the Facebook group. Um, so I like Strawberry Ridge. Um, there's Dressau. I don't even, is it Dressau or Dresso? I'm not sure how to say this. They breed Cormos and they breed Brilliant Fleeces. Um, Stacy at Dresso is a gem. And I have a Cormo cross from her. And two of my friends also have Cormos from her. And they love their fleeces. So highly recommend them. I, I have a few Romneys from Oak Creek Sheep. Um, and I think she's only on Instagram. I'm pretty sure she's only on Instagram because I sent her a DM and that's how I got my fleece and then she sent me like a list of all of her available fleeces and that's how I was able to pick my fleece from her. Um, there's EBR Farm if you're looking for CVM who's also I think only on Instagram. I can't remember if any of these uh, farms have websites or not but if they have websites I will link the websites. If not you're going to have to just go look for them on Instagram because that's how I find most of my fleeces. Um, and I think everyone else I found through the Raw Wool for Sale Facebook group. If you are going to buy a fleece on Etsy, because you can buy Raw Wool on Etsy, I would read the reviews. Because at least on Etsy, you can read the reviews of shops. Read the reviews before you commit and see what people are saying about the fleeces that they've received. You can't, obviously can't read a review on the fleece that you're going to get because you're going to get it and it's like a, it's a one of a kind item. But read the reviews of what people are saying about that particular farmer um, and see people love their fleeces. Sometimes people post pictures of the yarn that they've made. If that is something that you're interested in, look at the pictures that they're posting and see if it's in line with what you were hoping to make with your fleece. Um, the review section on Etsy is invaluable. I have used the review section on Etsy. I, my Shetland fleece from Una, um, that I bought from Eureka Farms, I bought on Etsy. And I felt comfortable buying it on Etsy because of the reviews. And then when I opened it, the shepherd packaged it so nicely. I was just like, wow, this is like a real treat. Um, and my final tip is if you're really interested in processing wool and you wanna learn how to like really do it and you're on social media, is follow people online who do the thing you wanna do. I really, really got into processing after I started following people online um, because they're sharing in their stories their own processes. But not only are they sharing in their stories their own processes, they're sharing their sources. So a lot of people will be like, oh, got this cool fleece from such and such today. And they'll tag the Instagram page of the person they got the fleece from. And that is how I found some great shepherds is just following people's hash following people's tags following people's mentions, following that farmer, and then sending them a message when I was ready to get a fleece from their flock. So if you're really interested in learning how to process wool and finding good wool connections, follow the people who are doing the thing you wanna do. You can literally just hashtag raw wool on Instagram and then take your pick from the post that you find there. Scroll through the hashtag, click on some people's pictures, if you like what they're sharing, follow them along and then wait till they start sharing their resources 
the other thing I would say you could do is if you could use Ravelry, and I know Ravelry is not super accessible for everybody, but if you can use Ravelry, there is the um, Raw Wool Lovers, I think is what it's called. The Raw Wool Lovers Ravelry group. That group is like uh, Woolaholics Anonymous. It's also like Enabling Central. So don't go in there if you're trying to like not be enabled, but if you don't mind being enabled, the Raw Wool Lovers uh, Ravelry group is also a great resource because everyone's sharing where they found stuff. And then they're sharing processing tips and they're sharing their works in progress as they like work on their fleeces. So I hope that helped. Those are my tips for buying a fleece online. You guys, it's, it's a risky business. So, well, it can be a risky business. So manage your expectations set a budget, and then have fun. It is a really, really fun thing to do. Most of my fleeces I buy at like 2 a.m. when I can't sleep. Um, but it's a really, really fun thing to do to just like scroll through the Facebook group and see what's available, see all the breeds that are available. Um, and it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to chat with these shepherds and see like what they're doing and how they're working in their own neck of the woods. And then when you bring a fleece home and you make something nice, you can send them pictures. And they're always so happy to see like, the animals that they loved and they cared for doing what they do. So that's day three of Vlogmas. I hope you found uh, something informative here as I babbled about buying raw wool. I am just about done. Here it is. I'm just about done with the first half of my fiber. This Targi is pretty much spinning itself. So I'm, I have uh, maybe 20 more minutes before I have to go get ready for work. So I think I'm going to try to finish up this piece. And then I will see you in two days for the next opening of our Advent Spin. So till next time, happy Vlogmas and happy December.